Brum, brum, brum. Yeah. Cleaned up the shaft a bit. Machine the end to accept a uh, propeller. I'm just so excited that I managed to get it uh, this good. Oh my gosh, it feels like a fan. How can I show that? Have a look at there. Woohoo! <laughs> So today is a play day. I have this electric motor over here and it is a 24 volt uh, from an old electric lawnmower. So the, the whole goal of this is to create an electric drive for my crow design. And I happen to have a steel rod, not stainless. So how do I put it through the, the transom and there's a bulkhead? So there'll be a two point, um, two points where I can mount uh, a set of bearings. And of course, where am I gonna get the bearings to fit the shaft? Well, I have these old dolly tires. And if we take them apart, they'll work quite nicely. So once apart, the bearings part of this, um, this contraption, this hub, half hub, and all I have to do actually is grind away so I have this flat surface and this could be bedded and mounted on the transom. And I need the shaft to slide in and out because the idea is I want that my prop can be slid into the water. My, my transom is on quite an angle actually. So it should slide into the water to be in use and then slide up against the up against the hull a two blade prop so that it won't offer any drag. I'm not sure how that'll all go but I'm just playing today and I thought hmm I was looking all over the shop for stuff that I could sort of scavenge and this is an interesting piece and actually kind of um, would suit. This is I don't think it's stainless, but it's galvanized or something because it's obviously rusting a bit. And also, this hub in here is, is handy because I can put a piece of plastic uh, plumbing pipe or electrical conduit or something and seal it over top so the whole unit is watertight in the boat and doesn't fill, fill the float compartment that I have at the back. I'm optimistic, that's kind of cool. And maybe it'll come out pretty good. I use a regular rubber hose at first, but adapting it to two different sizes of a, of a shaft didn't work. So this is not, this is just very rough. Here's a, a hunk of rubber that I had around. Just lucky to collect odds and ends. Hand drilled it, I did not manage to drill it 100% center. So I imagine this is gonna fall apart when I when I finally do the test because I haven't got a grat, what do you call it? Um, like a dimmer switch type switch. I have just like, it's full on right now. There's the original switch uh, from the lawnmower. I have a throttle for a little scooter. That would work. I'm going to do a test and see how this flies apart. I staggered my, my um, Beasties there so that uh, they're somewhat uh, somewhat balanced, I hope, and we'll see. For entertainment's sake, what I'm using is just an 18 volt um, battery pack. You can use um, 18 volt for 24 volt, not 24 for 18. So it'll have a 24 volt, either two or four deep cycle batteries, 12 volts. Here we go. Wish me luck. Actually, that was a success, other than I have to better hold down that motor. Rigged it a lot uh, more sturdy now, so I got a couple angle brackets just uh, through. So, you know, now it's it's on there pretty strong. So the motor itself won't shake. We'll see what the tire does. It, I screwed the rubber of the tire to the um, wood block and then basically um, um, clamped the block. So that's all very temporary. So let's try this again. Hold it together and go. Awesome. I want to run it for a little bit so that I actually see the wear and tear because I'm not necessarily sure I'll line up, line up the shaft perfectly. So there'll be some vibration. So that's why the rubber might work pretty good. I certainly want to work on the balance a little bit uh, 
to avoid the noise. That's pretty good. I already see a bend, so I'm going to uh, try and take out some of the bend in the shaft. Uh, it's not the shaft that's bent, it's the way I have it set up. Move my block over a bit. Okay, I adjusted my blocking. I'll let you get a little closer look. Now that I know the whole thing's not gonna fall apart, still pretty, this is really serious hard rubber. So there's enough flex there. And as I say, I didn't drill it out perfectly uh, centered, so that's an issue as well. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to make a setup that can drill it out perfect. Now let's go for another run here. Okay, you can see there's some refinement, but for a play day, this uh, looks like it has potential. When I get the second bearing set up on the other bulkhead, that will help. And then I have some machining to do on the end here to uh, attach a shaft, uh, sorry, a prop. So there's, there's today's results. I'm satisfied with that. Now I should get back to what Deanne is expecting that I'm actually doing, and that's cleaning my shop. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I ran into this stuff while cleaning the shop, and I have the kind of brain that just has to take. Just uh, noticed or discovered that if I adjust my, because I didn't drill centered, I don't know if you noticed the black is a little thicker on that side than it is on this side. So if I alternate my uh, hose clamps so that they're actually on the side that is off-centered. I've been able to balance it. So I, th I just thought I'd, I, it's sounding so nice. I thought I'd let you see how it runs completely balanced now. Much better. So, so the point is, if I can correct it to this level, I can probably dial it in to near perfection. If I drill and, and make a new uh, rubber flange, that is more balanced and utilize these as kind of like car tire weights. Okay, here's a little more refinement. <clears throat> Cleaned up the shaft a bit. And like I say, I'll have to machine the end to accept a um, propeller. And you can see how smooth I've managed to dial it in. That's pretty nice. And I just clamped things on. And just the 18 volt battery, I've had running for a while. There's an indicator. Oh, she's getting drained. Uh, where is it? She's getting down there now. So, yeah. But I've had it running for, let's say, a half an hour. And that's just a tiny little battery. So, that's pretty cool. So, here's an old outboard where I'm scavenging the prop for my electric drive. So what I have to do is I have to recreate this shaft. I have a 5 8 shaft and I have to work it down to half inch. Drill here. I probably won't do the threading. I'll probably do a tapered fit, but with a, um, uh, what do you call those, uh, cotter pin, that will be good enough. All right, you can see here how I'm working this down very roughly, actually it's kind of warm right now, um, with a grinder. So my machine shop is less than ideal, but I'm going to work this gradually down. I turn on, put hook up the battery, spin it in the wheel, and then grind away. And then I'll trim down this end even more to make, the, uh, make it so that this um, part here will fit over top and I'll make it a taper fit but then with the cotter pin it'll it'll stay on there pretty reasonably. I'll show you do not do anything I do none of this is safe so don't copy me I'm just showing you what I'm doing um, and and you'll see in a minute why it's probably not the safest thing to do even my grinder I have an oversized blade in it. I'm wearing big heavy duty gloves but you see my grinder has no guard
let's see, and I'm going to use the emery paper too, so if it starts getting too close, I will take off more. So, no. Where my big file went. This will flatten it out. rather than sending it out somewhere. Not even worth the time to get in the car and deliver it somewhere, so. Plus the expense, right? If you don't have a lathe, sometimes you can grind and file things and it works out just fine. So before I go too far, let's see how that's looking. Now much smoother. Oh, she's close. I think I'll work on taking the rest down with the file and I'll get back to you when, when I have it on. Okay, so there's the prop on. No cotter pin on as yet, or sorry, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, sacrificial chunk of metal that uh, breaks off when the prop hits. So that was done with a grinder and a file, just set up in a wheel bearing. So not bad machining, not sloppy. It's on there pretty good. So that should do quite nicely. And that way uh, it's not well, not a different shaft welded in or no attachment, that's all the same thing. Now I have to do this little section here so that I can get my cap on and avoid the whole deal of machining um, threads on there. So that's, that's going to be the prop I'm going to use. It's from an old uh, Evan Rood. And hopefully I can pick up, you know, several of these props that they're standard shafts. So anytime I see a used one, I'll pick it up. But it's nice because it's a two-blade prop. A buddy of mine gave me the motor. I was going to do the, um, the, th the thing where you put the electric motor on the shaft and utilize the, the gearing. But in theory, the gearing... Uh, I still have a motor on, hanging on the back of my sailboat, which I hate. Um, and this way, running through the hull, basically like, what do they call those, um, uh, something tail, um, that, uh, like the in Asia, how they have them. It's just a straight shaft, and uh, it won't have the inefficiency of the gearing, and I won't have to have any oil in it at all. So it'll be quite cool. So great, this is on nicely. And that was just like I say, with a grinder and a file. So I use a little emery and it's smooth enough. I used a fine, a fine, um, uh, a fine file for the end of it, you know, so that, uh, that worked out really good. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Yeah, no motor. I disconnected the motor. Finally got everything ground down. This is a nice friction fit. I drilled it out for a larger cotter pin. And it's the shear pin that, <laughs> that I forgot what, what it was called that uh, I drilled for the shear pin. And so that's on there quite nicely. Now what I need to make though is I need, because this is going to extend out, I need to make some sort of a cone to sit in this area right here to taper it because obviously water running against that is not very hydrodynamic, right? So it might be easier if I could find something that already has a hole drilled in the middle that was intended to be centered, machined, and so forth. And um, then I know it's 100% balanced. Also added a little uh, washer in there for the beast to seat on. It is actually on there very solid. So I'm thrilled. This is going to work out really good. So that's today's progress. I better get doing some, some work, uh, other, other kind of work. Um, and I'll clean that up and repaint the prop and it's going to look pretty hot. Position I have, so it's a bit on a bend. I have it sticking out a bit because I was curious to see. So I went to one of my local stores. I went to one of my local stores 
and I was just going up and down the aisles like a, a general, well, a Canadian Tire is what it's called. And just to, I wonder if that, oh my gosh, it feels like a fan. How can I show that? Holy cow, I could use this as a fan. And some dust. Have a look at there. Woohoo! <laughs> Okay, so the prop worked out really good. So I went to a local store, went up and down the aisles. And I do this often. I have no idea what I'm asking for. I'm not asking for nothing. But I have attendants come and try to give me help. And it's like, well, you know, I'm building uh, this and um, I'm looking for something shaped like that. So I bought a ball, which I'll actually use for exercise, sort of a squash ball or whatever it was. And I was going to drill that and put that in there. Uh, at the back side of the, I don't want to put my fingers too close, at the back side of the uh, prop to make it more of a torpedo shape. And then I went to the fishing section and I saw reels have kind of an okay shape, but I don't want to buy a whole reel. So I remembered I had some old kids reel and I drilled it out and it fits perfectly into the back so it's actually up into the prop and I'll use six sycaflex around the edges and around there so I painted it roughly and that works amazing this is the end of it for a little bit but much better I still haven't done a new uh, new little tube and made sure it's completely centered but the little bit of vibrating you see the um, stuff in my hands shaking more than anything you see the stuff in the background, it's not vibrating terribly badly. Um, yeah, so let's just shut that off and you can see it come to a stop. So I can probably rig reverse and forward. Get that off. Rig uh, reverse and forward. That's a bit dirty because I pounded it back into the sleeve. No big deal. And I filed this a little bit to make it a hair smoother. Didn't want to file this too much because you'd go through and then your cotter pin's um, uh, compromised. And here's the, the, and it was plastic. So some of them are aluminum. So I'm going to keep an eye out for later in life, but that's on there pretty good. And it, uh, it holds, it holds, holds on there all by itself, actually. So my intention, as I mentioned, is to caulk around this edge. And I'll do another little uh, bead around here. And I'll make myself a little paddle to smooth that off and taper it over top of this edge. And if it, you're using Sikaflex uh, 525, is that right? Five, it's five something. Um, it's good stuff. I have a tube of it kicking around. I can double check. But it's really good stuff. So that should be the end of this assembly. And I don't have to take this apart at all because I can just undo it right here and slide the shaft out. I was also online looking for props and I can pick up another one of these for about hmm, anywhere from 15 to $30 on eBay. So not too bad, but doesn't that look nice? I'm liking, I'm liking. Okay, so now back to cleaning this up, setting it aside and getting back to some other stuff I gotta do. Ciao. Oh, do visit RoyDesignThat.com for more. Bye-bye.